Hello everyone, it is Linda Hayes again. Today I want to talk about what the ideal investment property is. Is it buying land? Should you buy a house? Should you buy a condo? Many people ask me this question and it can apply if you're buying a place to live or if you're considering investment. I'm getting this question a lot in relation to my investments I have in Belize as well as in Edmonton. So in Edmonton, I only own houses that I've built brand new. And in Belize, I also did the same thing. But I want to talk about some reasons that you might want to consider other items depending on what market you're considering. So when I'm talking about some of these different types of property, my presentation here assumes that traditional bank financing is not available. And in my case, that's because I'm buying in Belize. But it's also the case for many other reasons. You could be looking at buying in a condo hotel, which typically doesn't have bank financing available, and also is maybe the case for people who can't get a mortgage. Might be because you have a lot of rentals, which makes getting a mortgage uh, harder because you're capped out, or maybe you're self-employed and you just don't have the number of years or the average income that you need to get a mortgage. So that's where you might want to consider seller financing. So what are some of the positives? So if you're buying land, one of the benefits is that it's the easiest to sell or finance, but then you need cash for building. Now, some people buy land because they want to do land banking and then later on sell for appreciation. Also, if you buy land, you can build a custom home. So whatever you want to do, depending on the neighborhood, you might be allowed. And once you finish building, you can uh, have good rental income from this. Now, what about a house? Well, the thing with houses, sometimes it's harder to find homes with vendor financing, although some sellers actually have that as a strategy. They want to make interest income, so they sell houses that way for that particular reason. Uh, homes tend to have the most flexible usage, so you could rent it out. You could also live in the home. And many tenants actually do want standalone homes. I used to have investments of houses with basement suites, and a lot of people uh, didn't like those uh, from a rental perspective. So that's why I moved into buying separate houses with either tiny homes or garden suites in the backyard. So now let's talk about condos. Those typically have limited seller financing available, but it's better than maybe a house. It might be a little more common because the price is cheaper and because there's more condos available for sale, some of the sellers are a little more flexible. Uh, condo hotels with a brand can also have potentially higher occupancy. So it's about getting heads in beds when it's an investment. And if you're buying a property in, say, the Hilton, the Marriott, or the Best Western, the occupancy is likely going to be higher than someone that just has their property on Airbnb. And in the case of a condo, of course, everything's taken care of for you. So you don't have to worry about landscaping, pool maintenance, all those kind of things. So now let's just talk about some of the negative aspects to each type of property. So when you're buying land, if you want to sell for appreciation, it's obviously hard to assess the correct timing. The other thing is that there's no cash flow on land and none during the build phase. So it takes a lot longer. You're putting money in in advance for the purchase and you're not making any money on it. If you're building, it's very difficult to find quality workers and also good project management. This depends on the market you're in. Uh, some markets, uh, like in Edmonton, I have no issue finding builders where there's lots of reviews and they do everything start to finish with a fixed quote. That's not the same in other countries such as Belize. And costs of building, of course, are continually rising. So in the case where you have a fixed price today, that might be okay, but a lot of times, things are going up in value and you have to spend more throughout your build. If you're buying a house, um, obviously it's already made, so that's a little bit simpler than building one from scratch, but you do need to get a reliable inspector to ensure there's no existing or problematic issues. Another thing I already mentioned, it's harder to finance a house because a lot of people don't want the risk of having someone in their home. So if they don't make payments, you can take the property back, obviously, so that's written right into the contract for vendor financing, but a lot of people just don't want the risk of someone trying to maybe steal the appliances or doing something crazy to the house when they're not able to pay. Now, in many cases, we do these vendor financing deals even in Canada, and I have actually sold a property that way just because I had a mortgage penalty I was going to have to pay if I sold it outright. So the vendor financing is something we typically do as investors, even in my market in Canada. And in Belize, it's even more common due to the lack of bank financing. 
uh, down payments do tend to be higher on houses because people, because of those risks we talked about, people aren't going to take, say, a 20% down that they might take on land. So your down payment tends to be much higher, usually around 50%. Sometimes you can negotiate, but it is a bit harder. Then when we talk about negatives for condos, obviously the cost can be really high. So you have HOA or condo fees, and those depend on the amenities and can be very expensive. Also, you can have special assessments. So it's critical when you're buying a condo to ensure there is enough in the reserve fund because if something happens where there needs to be big renovations, everyone has to split the cost. And if you don't have that money set aside, you can have a huge issue. In addition, competition is very high in the condo market. So a lot of times in Edmonton, a lot of people um, would ask, do I buy condos? And my answer is never. I've never bought a condo for investment purposes in Canada. And I did look at buying one when I was looking at Las Vegas as a market because they have some condo hotels like in the MGM. Uh, also in Canmore in the Rocky Mountains, I've invested in some mortgages in Canmore condo hotels because again, bank financing is hard for those. So those are kind of some exceptions where I do really like condo investments, condo hotels, that kind of thing. But generally, it's not really my market that I'm very involved in. The next question I get asked for investment purposes is how many bedrooms is the ideal amount? Now for investment purposes, Airbnb is a tool that compares results for different markets. And along with rental cash flow, you need to consider what's easier to sell in the long run. Also short-term and long-term rentals may have different profitability, so consider that when you're budgeting. It's also important to consider the demographic of the market. So talking about Belize, just as an example, in San Pedro, I see a lot more couples and singles versus families when I'm looking at long-term rentals. I am renting out a condo myself, and I see a lot of the different people around me that I know, and a lot of them actually are single. I know one family with two, two kids that are renting a two-bedroom. So again, uh, it just depends on the market you're in. And then my tiny homes, to talk about those in Belize, even though I have two one bedrooms, both of them, um, the one that's bigger could sleep four people for sure. But in my case, both of them are rented out just to one individual couple. And I have tenants till July that are one individual couple. And I have new tenants moving in in July that also are just one individual couple. They've rented both tiny homes because they like having the extra one for when family comes to visit in Belize. So that's one important thing to notice is maybe a one bedroom by itself. They wouldn't have wanted. They might have wanted a two bedroom to have that extra space available. But the two tiny homes work perfectly. But then I have the flexibility of also renting them out separately, especially when I'm doing short term rental. I'm in the process of getting approved to do short term rentals now. And that's why I've been putting long term renters in my property. So I already mentioned that AirDNA is a fantastic tool to assess what a particular market is like, and it's also great at seeing what type of bedroom count you might want. So I've done an analysis. This is just an example. You can do this for any market. And in this case, I took San Pedro in Belize, and I'm showing here what the average daily rate is for April 2022 based on the different number of bedrooms. So the chart shows you kind of a graph, the bottom uh, line is for one bedroom, the mid is two bedroom, and the upper is three bedroom. So the rates for April, just as an example, a one bedroom is 136 US a night, a two bedroom is 246, and a three bedroom was 365. So that's only one piece of the puzzle when you're doing a rental budget. So now let's talk about the second piece of a revenue budget. So occupancy is very important, and you can see in this graph that it's all over the map. Uh, different bedroom counts are different, and the monthly occupancies are quite different as well. So if we look at April 2022 for San Pedro, you can see that they're not all that different, actually. So one and two bedrooms, on average, were 50% occupancy, and a three-bedroom was at 58%. So these graphs can really help you uh, with seasonality seeing what occupancy you should have for different seasons. You can see in the case of September, October um, for last year, you can see that those are a little bit down and then it continually grows through busy season in San Pedro. So every market is going to have different occupancies, different seasons, summer versus winter in some markets, busy season versus slow season. So make sure you factor this into your budget. So once you've decided a market is good for investment purposes, you need to assess the numbers to decide what, as we said, what property to buy and also how many bedrooms you want. 
So in this analysis, I showed that three bedrooms do have the highest average daily rate and the highest occupancy. However, right now there is a shortage in the market. You can see that based on the rental size that came from AirDNA. So you can see that there is a lot more one bedrooms. There's about 140 and then two bedrooms. You can see there's around 80 and then it keeps going down for all the other bedroom counts. But another interesting thing to look at is how many people come on average. So you can see on the top of this graph, it says that on average, there's 1.8 bedrooms on all the properties and that there's an average of 4.6 guests. Now, what we wanna consider then is if the average number of guests that are coming are 4.6 guests, how many bedrooms do they need? So in San Pedro, there are a ton of one bedrooms that have pull out couches, which means four people can stay. So are people willing to pay the higher rate for a three bedroom if a one bedroom will work? And obviously that is that depends on the people and the market you're in. So that's one thing to consider and that will affect what your revenue you're gonna get on the specific property is. So when you're budgeting, make sure you compare the higher rates you get for revenue with the higher cost of building. I've heard a lot of people say, oh, there's hardly any three bedrooms, so go ahead and build them and the rates are higher. Well, overall, your revenue will definitely be higher and you need to put that in your budget. But the other thing you need to do besides looking at occupancy is look at the cost of the build and do a return on investment. When you do your ROI, that will really tell you what the best investment is. So once you have your average daily rate and your occupancy, that will give you what your revenue amount would be. So this chart from AirDNA shows the actual revenue by bedroom type in each month. So if you look at April, which is what I'm showing all the time, you can see that on average, a one bedroom was at $1,700, a two bedroom at $2,700, and a three bedroom at $4,600. So that's just for April. And so that factors in both your rate and your occupancy. And then the other thing on this graph that I wanted to look at is the annual revenue growth. So this is another aspect of this revenue chart that they showed is how much is revenue this year for the different bedrooms compared to last year. So for one bedroom, it's 78% higher, two bedrooms, 69 and three bedrooms, 36%. So one, uh, one bedroom seemed to be having a higher growth amount in the revenue. And that is uh, always dependent on the different market. And because of COVID, these numbers for revenue growth might be a little bit skewed, but normally you can look at this just to see if a market looks like it's growing a lot. But having said that, growth isn't as important as knowing that your current revenue that you expect is going to give you a really good return on investment. You want to evaluate things and compare them to other things you could put your money to. So if you look at the revenue of, different, of a different type of property with a certain number of bedrooms, you calculate what the cost of buying or building that property is, you're going to get a, an ROI number that you can compare to anything else you can do. Now I want to do a little bit of a summary. So I have already created several videos with examples of condos for sale in San Pedro because I've had many people that I've worked with that have asked questions about condos and bought them as a result. Uh, many people do consider buying condos for lifestyle reasons and others buy them, uh, the condo hotels, as I mentioned, for investment purposes. So the MGM in Vegas I mentioned, uh, also Canmore and Belize are some markets I know of that are very common for this. Now on the land side, many lots have seller financing. If you have the time and expertise and want something custom, building may be the way to go. However, if you can find a turnkey home, this may be easier. But whatever you do consider, make sure you do a rental budget. Now here's a little bonus content for those of you who watch till the end. I do have a fantastic house for sale with financing in San Pedro, Belize. I already talked about the fact that this isn't common, but this is a brand new house. Nobody's lived in it yet, has a private pool. I'm going to show that next. And it's going to be listed likely by next week. So I wanted to present it here. So if you're interested, reach out as soon as you can, because this one is going to move fast. So this house will be listed at 47899 and it's two bedrooms and it also has a loft and it's inside Mahogany Bay Village, which many of you know is a gated community. And there's two bedrooms that are both basically master bedroom size with their own ensuite. And the good thing is they have doors to the deck as well. So you could do a lock off of one of them if you're staying in one and you wanted to rent out the other one. As I said, there's two bad bathrooms associated with the bedrooms, but there's also a half bath 
for the other spaces in the home. And it is near the upcoming community pool right on street one and close to the barcade where there's a lot of arcade games. So this is a perfect family home or for some couples that want to have their own bedroom with their bathroom. And there is custom furniture being built as we speak. So everything always is gonna be ready to go and brand new for someone looking for something that's turnkey. So a few other features of the house. So the loft is great because it can function as a home office or a sleeping area. And there are uh, people that would rent it for 3000 a month plus utilities. So my property manager has looked at it and assessed that and, and definitely very easy to get that amount. The financing structure is pretty flexible with 50% down. So reach out to me if you wanna hear some of the terms. HOA fees in the community are 350 a month. And another thing I wanted to talk about with Mahogany Bay are the amenities. So this is on street one. So it's gonna be really close to the community pool, also uh, really close to the barcade where there's a golf simulator, a poker table and all kinds of other games. Also all the different restaurants, the tour disc, everything there is at your fingertips in the community. Thanks for watching. Here I've put a few QR codes for some of my playlists. So one is real estate investing. That one goes through a lot of general tips if you are looking to become an investor. I also have one on investing in Belize. If you are looking for information, I've had a lot of lessons I've learned the hard way and I like to share information with people. And then if you're into uh, looking at Belize real estate, I have videos on properties available along with rental options. And that content is gonna continue in the future. And please reach out, especially if you're coming to Belize, it would be great to see you there.